Okay, we're right in the middle of the assembly of the five-head microscope. We have on the left and the right the stands for the outer heads. One thing you have to do is you have to line up horizontally, make sure everything on the left and on the right and the center is on an even plane. These have a feature where you can turn them. I can turn it this direction and it lowers it. I can turn it this direction and it raises it. It's just a small amount of travel, maybe a quarter inch or so. Just so many threads, just that much of a distance to raise and lower. Yeah, I'm going to turn it this way again, it's going to lower it. This seems to just swivel and not lock into place. There is a screw inside these. If that screw comes out, you're not going to see it from the video, but there is a screw in there. Just take a screwdriver and tighten that screw. I was working with this earlier and the screw came out, so I just tightened the screw. At this point, it's ready. ready to assemble. There is a, an Allen head, Allen head socket screw for the bottom. This bolts it to the table. So you put the Allen head from below. Put this and just tighten just tighten them up. One thing about this table this is not the best table. This is, this is a simple table. You can have any table you want. Just, just take and drill, pre-drill these holes as needed. There's no hole in the middle. So take, take any table you want and drill two holes. Especially whenever we ship these outside of the U.S. to a foreign destination. We usually don't ship the table. Customers are usually just find it more economical to get their own table and drill two holes and make it work. So I'm going to start the assembly. Just going to hand tighten it right now. Actually, that, that's good enough. I took this piece apart just to see how everything is assembled. You can use a screwdriver on this gnarled head. It's a little too tight to use your fingers. There's a screw that threads in. So I'm going to slide it back in place and tighten these two down.
the microscope is all labeled. This number matches the number that's over here. Also, this number matches this number. Now, in order to get this into place, I'm going to have to remove this bottom screw. so that I can scoot it over. Then I can put this screw up from the bottom to lock everything into place. Same thing on this side. We have a, a sticker with a number and it matches the number here. Another sticker matching this number. So these can be turned to keep everything horizontal. You just got to look at it and line up everything. Also, you can take a small screw and lock this rod to this unit. There's several screws along here. Putting the head in place is rather easy. Be careful about holding the head upside down, otherwise you're going to drop out an eyepiece. Simply has a dovetail fitting. The screw locks it into place. That's typical of all of the heads. Okay, if something is still not leveled up, you can lift these up. You just you're just going to have to work with it. But you can you can rotate you can rotate these as needed to get everything leveled up. Remember remember you have a screw on the bottom too. It's tightening and holding this into place. Even the heads are marked. The head has a number and it's marked where it goes. Actually, I don't think it matters. I think all four of these heads are inter should be interchangeable, but the factory has them marked, so I would put them right where, right where they are marked at. They are rotatable. So at this point, everything is lined up and ready to begin using. Okay, here we have a five-head microscope. This would be a considered a teaching microscope. We could have one teacher at one station, and we could have four students at the other station. All of them see the, see the same simultaneous image. The heads are all rotatable, so depending on where a person sits and their chair arrangement, they can't adjust this more. The microscope has a pointer system. This is the pointer intensity knob, and this is the pointer location. And there is a switch for the pointer, LED pointer. This pointer is superimposed on the image, and it is seen by both the student heads and the teaching head. One thing to get into would be the, the light bulb. At the back of the unit is the light housing, external light housing. This is a very high intensity, high wattage bulb. That's why the bulb is based at, that's why the light housing is based at the very back because there's a lot of heat. This is a big heat sink. 
One thing to note on the bulb is, is that you need to align the bulb. This looks like a proper alignment. If you've rotated the bulb this way, you're not going to get near the elimination. So the bulb needs to be rotated in the proper way. And also, the bulb can rotate within the socket. It's got sort of a ball here. And so this is, this is adjustable by the user. But make sure when you insert the bulb, you've inserted it to the proper angle. Also, you can look into the eyepieces and view the image as well as rotate the bulb. Do that until you get the brightest intensity. You can tighten it down more. If you tighten it down enough, then it doesn't tend to move at all which is what you want to do after you've properly positioned the bulb. There's also a knob at the base. You can't see it from the video, but there's a knob sticking out here, and that, that also adjusts the light. It focuses the light, so adjust that knob as needed while you're looking into the eyepieces to get the best image. Let's go over the function of the microscope. We've already talked about the LED. We have the 410, 40, and 100 power objectives. The 100 power objective is an oil-based, oil immersion, so you would use a drop of oil on the slide, let it come into contact with the oil. So the, the objective lens touches the oil and the oil is also on the slide. That is the only objective that is an oil immersion. Also has an X and Y stage movement. This is typical of any of the microscopes. Also has a light condenser adjustment. You can raise and lower the light condenser. Coarse focusing. This is the fine focusing. It's got a travel lock stop. So if I want to lock it at this level and not allow the stage to go up, I turn it and it's locked. As you can see, the stage won't go up any further. So if you can't get the object in focus, take a look at your travel lock stop. You might need to release it. Now I've released it. If you notice, I can get it, get it much closer. In fact, I have to be careful because I could get it so close to damage some, some of the lens. That's the reason for the lock stop. Sometimes people will lock it at a certain position where it can't go any higher to damage something. On the other side is the coarse focus adjustment. It's, it's coaxial to the focusing knobs. If you turn it one direction, it makes it harder. It, tight, it, 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 it increases the resistance of the coarse focusing. Turning it the other direction loosens and makes it easier to do the coarse focusing. You have the light intensity knob. This is for the, both the pointer and the halogen light that illuminates the image. You have a You have the ability to turn these any direction. This is the top trinocular port for the photography, camera, video system.